What's up guys? Today I want to talk a little bit about strength training and hypertrophy training, how and why they're different, and based on what your goals are, which one you should do or lean more towards. Um, when it comes to training in general, you know, doing all sorts of different kinds of training um, is beneficial for you because it's going to keep your body guessing. Um, you know, there are a lot of variables that come into place, but um, basically, starting with strength training, if your goal is to get stronger, um, you do need to overload the muscle. You need to, if you're trying to prepare your body to move a certain amount of weight, the only way it's going to learn how to push or pull or squat that weight that you're doing is by um, overloading your your cent like shocking your central nervous system, giving it the weight. You know, training at a 80 to 90 percent, you know, of your one rep max for sets. So, you know, typically that's you know four to six reps. You know, you know your your work your working sets are are in the lower rep ranges with heavier weight. And typically the rest periods in between are longer. You get to recharge your phosphagen system, which is responsible for putting out you know, strength. And it takes actually five minutes for your phosphagen system to fully recover from a set. So if, if you're strength training and you're looking for a one rep max and you're trying and trying and trying, if you're not resting five minutes before your, your max output, you're not allowing your body to recover. So that's where it differs from high intensity training, you know, high, uh, hypertrophy training. Um, and, and this is, you know, the clear difference between power lifters and bodybuilders. Power lifters, their goal is they have one goal and one goal only, and that's to move a certain amount of weight. Typically, they don't care how they look. Um, if they can move the weight from point A to point B, they're set. So again, they train with heavier weight, less reps to prepare themselves for that level of strength. Um, now, strength training and hypertrophy training, they go hand in hand in a sense because at the end of the day, you need to have both um, to keep your body progressing. But hypertrophy training is more or less based on um, filling your muscles with, with glycogen um, and, and just, you know, contraction based high reps, supersets, drop sets, you're forcing as much blood as you possibly can into your muscle in the shortest amount of time. So, you know, the rest periods tend to be a little shorter um, and the intensity is a lot higher. Now, typically, you know, we don't use, you know, as a bodybuilder myself, um, you know, I, I do have workouts where I'll, you know, try to find my max and I'll lift heavy here and there. But I only do that to figure out where my strength is at and to make sure that I'm on the right path. And it's good, it's good to know where you're at strength-wise. But typically with bodybuilding and hypertrophy training, you know, after a, a while doing a lot of work with a little bit of rest, your muscle's gonna be so fatigued that it can't even tolerate, you know, those levels of, of you know, weights, you know, that you would do for strength training. Um, so, you know, lighter weight feels heavier if it's done properly. And focusing on things like, um, isometric contractions, slow controlled negatives. Um, first and foremost, um, going even to the basics, um, when you're doing an exercise, you want to be able to fully stretch and fully contract your muscle in each rep that you do. If you're not getting a full range of motion um, and you're like sacrificing range of motion for weight, that's a mistake. Um, you should, ne that means it's too heavy, um, point blank. So, <clears throat> um, I lost my I lost my train of thought for a second. Hold on. Um, so, oh, okay. Isometric contractions are important. Um, slow controlled negatives. Um, fully stretching, fully contracting in every rep that you do. Um, just maximum blood flow. Like I said, if you can't fully stretch or fully contract due to pain in a joint, typically it means you have lack of flexibility or lack of mobility in the joint. So stretching and um, also working on, you know, building stable, you know, stabilization muscles around the joint so that when you go to use heavier weights, um, in the stretched position, it won't feel as painful. Um, so, you know, those things are important. I don't typically, when I do my high intensity workouts, I don't typically do a lot of weight and a lot of people, they'll look at me and I can almost tell like they're confused as to why I'm in the shape that I'm in and I'm not doing a lot of weight or I'll be applying I'll be applying techniques 
Um, you know, for example, on a bench press, on the negative phase of the rep, I'll have like an inward squeeze on the bar where I'll be like forcing my chest to contract through both phases of the rep. And that's not something that can be seen with the eyes and it, it makes the weight a lot harder. It makes the exercise a lot more intense. Um, so things like that, because you're maximizing blood flow, like I said before. So if I'm forcing my chest to contract as hard as I can through both phases of the rep, it's being completely activated the whole way through. There's no momentum. Um, so it's complete activation of the muscle, essentially. Um, and, and getting a full stretch, I think, is, is what most people lack. For example, doing lat pulldowns or pull-ups, people don't go all the way down into a dead hang. Um, now, unless your purpose of the set that you're doing is to hit partial reps, which partial reps play a tremendous role in, in building uh, muscle, because um, you're working certain uh, parts of the range of motion and um, you're overloading certain areas in a way that you normally wouldn't to train the muscle to get stronger in that area. Um, so those are, are key. Um, and again, why this is different from strength training because none of this typically has anything to do with really building strength. Are you going to get stronger as a result? Yes. Um, because as you get bigger, you do get stronger, but it's not the focal point. That's why bodybuild. Uh, that's why powerlifters don't typically do a lot of that stuff. They're not looking to, you know, have their muscles blow up and and look a certain way. They're not forcing glycogen. They're 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 training their central nervous system and their muscle to handle a certain amount of weight, and that's it. Um, and and with powerlifters, um, you know, you have to have a strong core. So either way, um, whether you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, you train for strength and hypertrophy, the stronger your core is, the stronger you're gonna be, period, in every lift that you do, in your deadlift, in your squat, in your bench, um, in, you name the exercise. If you have a strong core, it's gonna enable you to do more weight than anything you do if you learn how to activate and use your core to your advantage. Um, so those, because I always get questions, um, you know, how many reps should I do? How many sets should I do? How much weight? I don't know. Like these are questions that are common, and oh, you know, high reps for cutting and low reps for bulking. Um, no, not necessarily. Um, bulking and cutting is is literally the diet that you're on. Um, your muscle is going to retain itself and look a certain way based on what you're eating and the level of shred that you have. Whether you're, you know, 20% body fat or 10% body fat, 7% body fat, that's based on your nutrition and your ability to retain as much muscle as you can while you're trimming down. So no, not necessarily. I think that's a very um, ignorant statement. Like I've I heard that since child. I used to believe it like in high school and then once I actually learned, it didn't really make sense. However, the lower rep ranges will lead you to build more strength. It won't, it's not necessarily a bulking and cutting thing. So, you know, use, you know, hit exercises for, you know, four to six reps, hit them for eight to 10, for 10 to 12, for 12 to 15, for 15 to 20, 20 to 30. Target all rep ranges, shock your muscle, do something different all the time so that it's not, it doesn't really know what to expect. Um, on an exercise you would normally do on its own, do it as a superset or add in like a draw, like a pyramid set, a triple drop set, something to just burn it out that you're not used to doing. Um, these are things that's gonna that's gonna shock your body and your muscle into new growth. Um, so again, it's 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 a bit, I really wanted to talk about this because I want people to to truly know what they're talking about and to understand that our bodies really they don't know how much weight we're actually lifting. They 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 what they know is based off our habits and based off what we do is is what they become to do so to speak so if you continue to do high intensity high rep whatever workout that you're doing your body is going to be prepared for that and that's what it's going to be good at that's what it's going to be efficient in if you train for strength all the time and you're constantly adding more and more and more weight it's going to get stronger so, and but again you know if, if you don't have good posture and you don't have good range of motion then it doesn't matter how much weight you're doing or what you're doing because you're not that in itself you're not enabling your body to grow to its max potential based on what you want posture is key range of motion is key don't let your ego get involved it can be to an extent 
but not to the point where you're acting stupid in the gym or going to hurt yourself because you want to impress somebody. Um, so, you know, safety is key. Um, but again, shock your body, do all rep ranges, don't get comfortable and constantly, and you have to track your progress. You have to know what you're doing because if you're just going to the gym blindly and saying, oh, today I'm going to do this and you, know, you walk into the gym the next day, oh, I feel like doing this. You don't really have anything written down. You're not logging anything. You don't even know what you're doing. And if you don't have a plan in place, then that means that you don't have a goal in place. That means that you're not really shooting for anything. So in order to track your progress and know if what you're doing is working, you have to log. And that's why I love using my Instagram. Not only am I motivating others and um, preaching you know, health and fitness, I'm documenting my own fitness journey and I'm showing people what it takes, why I do what I do, how it works, and how it's affecting me. And, and I think that's, you know, you have to do that. You, you, you know, it is tedious, it does take a lot of time, but if it really means enough to you, if you have a goal, you'll do it. So again, and don't shy away from cardio, whether you're bulking, cutting, strength training, anything. Heart health is key and, and good cardiovascular endurance is, you know, it, it comes into play with anything that you do strength training as well. You know, all the systems are important. Don't just target one system, hit them all. So um, that's my little rant for today. Again, thank you everyone for tuning in and giving me the support you have been. I'll see you guys later.